Good afternoon from NASA's Johnson Space Center. Welcome to the STS-133 mission status briefing. I am joined today by Tony Sikachi. He is the entry flight director for Discovery's reentry tomorrow. He's going to be giving us an update on what's in store and how the conditions look down in Florida in terms of weather. So go ahead, Tony. Okay, thanks, Josh, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to he be here, and before you ask, Tim Cooper and I weren't riding bikes together. Just another <laughs> little rotator cuff problem I had there, but uh, everything's doing fine. Thank you. Uh, you probably heard this be from Leroy uh, in his uh, uh, briefing this morning, so uh, bear with me as I go through all this. But we had a very uh, successful flight day 13 morning uh, as the crew uh, got their self uh, and Discovery ready for uh, entry tomorrow. Uh, the crew woke up about 2.30 this morning, hit the ground running as they usually do, and per our typical uh, end of mission minus one activi activities, uh, we comp completed the flight control systems checkout uh, with no anomalies. Uh, systems are ready for entry. We did the uh, standard RCS hot fire with no anomalies, and uh, all the primary jets are ready to support entry. Uh, as the crew typically does, both the commander and pilot performed uh, landing simulations on uh, utilizing the pilot laptop uh, simulator. And uh, we got to see some uh, video from that as uh, both uh, Steve and uh, Eric were running through that. And of course, throughout the day, crew is getting the uh, vehicle itself uh, ready for uh, uh, entry tomorrow as far as the mid-deck, flight deck, and of course the airlock, making sure it's all configured uh, properly to support entry. Let's see. What we did after the hot fire, uh, you probably heard we did a, a, a secondary uh, payload activity called uh, Rambo 2, which is a ram burn observation 2. Uh, basically, we did uh, three sets of uh, plus X firings uh, to help uh, the DOD folks get some uh, data on that. And I didn't have any more detail than that. And if you have any questions, let's see. Uh, as far as uh, later, the activities later in the day, we will be doing an orbit adjust about an hour from now. Uh, the lower the perigee in it, we're doing that to uh, provide us a second opportunity at KC tomorrow. Our plan is not to use it, but it just gives us that uh, uh, capability and option up front if, in fact, we did have to wave off a rev. Uh, before we came in, we did uh, standard uh, L minus one comp checks with uh, Mila, uh, basically checking out the uh, HUD video that we get from the crew. Also, uh, make sure we had good UHF with them. and and good comm through the Milo station uh, support entry. And later on, uh, I think in next, uh, about next hour or so, they'll be doing the same check with Edwards just to check that link out. Uh, later on in the day, uh, one of the last major activities the crew will have is uh, to stow the KU uh, band antenna, uh, get the payload bay ready for uh, the ride home. Let's see, uh, as far as the TPS, I think Leroy already told you this, but. Uh, uh, the discovery is cleared for entry. Uh, the, the engineering folks did a great job uh, reviewing the data, and they got, the, got that complete uh, a little ahead of the timeline. Uh, uh, see, I'll give you a quick story on the consumables and weather story. Uh, right now, we have the consumables to support out to end of mission plus two, which is Friday. Uh, as far as the forecast for KSC uh, Wednesday, uh, they're trending very well and uh, looking very promising. Uh, and with that, and with the next day's uh, forecast, my plan tomorrow, or the plan tomorrow, is just only uh, call up KSC. And let's see if we needed an end emission plus one for whatever reason we had to wave off tomorrow. Well, the end emission one one will become pick'em day. Basically, uh, we will come home, and you know we have that uh, opportunity to go to Edwards, KSC, or Northrop, and we'll look at the weather and see what the best uh, options are to do that. See tomorrow's activities. Crew wakes about. Uh, 2.30 in the morning, uh, the over prep starts, and these are central times. The over prep starts about uh, 10 to 6. We we'll close the payload bay doors around 7 o'clock, and then uh, the go-no-go -no -go for the orbit burn will be around 9.30 central time. See, uh, the orbit burn to uh, KSC orbit uh, 202 is going to be around 9.30. Let's see if we have the ground track for a KSC 202. Show that real quick. Okay. Oh, there we go. Let's see. That one is for 202, right? Okay. Let's see. Basically, uh, I'll do a, a, my quick summary here. We're going to cross the western edge of uh, Central America, of course, near Guatemala and El Salvador, uh, towards the Yukon, and then uh, west of Cuba, and we're heading on to Florida, crossing over Sarasota, Lakeland, and then uh, 
St. Cloud, and then we'll head on our way to KSC. See, uh, as far as, like I talked about, if uh, for some reason we uh, are unable to uh, get to KSC 202, we have a backup opportunity, uh, KSC Orbit 203, and that TIG is around uh, 1130 uh, Central Time. Let's see. Again, uh, let me see, just to summarize, the crew is doing really great. Probably saw from a lot of the downlink that they had. And uh, they're having a good time, and they're getting ready to, to come home. And that's all I have for you, Judge. OK. Uh, let's start off with questions here at JSC. Mark. Thanks, uh, Mark Corot for Aviation Week. Is, uh, is the forecast for the two landing opportunities in Florida tomorrow the same basically throughout, or is there any sort of change? And uh, what, what does it look like for Thursday if you had to wave off for some reason? Let's see. And your, your first part of your question, what we've been forecasting, Mark, uh, for the last week or so, uh, yeah, things are, I mean, things are tracking pretty well per the models. Uh, one of the things we checked today is what the, of course, the current weather was around landing time today, and that um, it tracked what we were expecting and forecasting, so we feel pretty comfortable with that. And again, you know, it's Florida, and it's always 50-50 there, but uh, just based on what the weather guys are forecasting, we uh, feel pretty comfortable. Uh, Thursday, uh, you probably saw during some of the weathering, there's a front that's going to be around the uh, Florida panhandle. And uh, for the first opportunity, we're con concerned about uh, possibly uh, some anvils coming off that uh, thunderstorm. And we have some rules that we can't, of course, fly through any of the anvils. And then the rev later, the thunderstorms get closer, so we uh, may have uh, uh, possibly have uh, thunderstorms within the 30 nautical mile circle. Good. Okay, Gina. Uh, Gina Sinceri, ABC News. Uh, for those of us who are watching your decision making tomorrow uh, during entry, tell me what systems you're monitoring and what input you're getting as you're making the decision whether or not to let Discovery deorbit. Well, walk me through that. okay. Uh, Let's see, you know, one of the big key things is what we did today, the FCS checkout and the hot fire, so we, we verified all the systems we require for uh, entry are uh, functional and available to us. A couple of the milestones, of course, tomorrow is uh, make sure we have a, a good uh, rad radiator fest bypass checkout, so basically utilizing the um, uh, cooling and the radiators and such to make sure we have a good uh, cooling with that. So that's one of our decision points and uh, once everything works well with that, of course we close the payload bay doors and that has to go successful, successfully. And then basically from then on, there on out, uh, we just continue to watch the weather and then at that point, you know, make the decision if we want to come home or not. Okay. Question? All right. Let's go down to the Kennedy Space Center for some questions there. Bill Harwood with CBS News. Tony, uh, if, if for some reason you couldn't make it in on, on, on Wednesday, you would land even on the West Coast on Thursday. I guess the reason I'm asking that question is sometimes in the past you'd be willing to, you know, try to get it back to the Cape. But I guess in this case, since it's not flying again, there's no pressing need for that. Can you just talk about that a little bit, that uh, you would come down on uh, Thursday in California if it comes to that? Yeah. Yes, sir. Of course, uh, like I talked about, uh, since we only have end emission plus two consumables, uh, and emission plus one becomes a, basically call it a pick 'em day. So we, we are coming home somewhere, uh, unless we have a systems problem where we'd have to stay up another day. But what we'll look at, Bill, probably one of the key things is just to see how the weather forecast is at KSC and, de and determine if we want to go ahead and try to close the payload bay doors and get the crew in the suits uh, early. If we think KSC is going to be no go for the first opportunity or even the second, we'll delay those decisions. Uh, just so the crew doesn't have to be uh, in their suits uh, for more than uh, you know two or three revs. So we'll look at the weather pretty uh, pretty hard. Uh, Thanks. And uh, Leroy was telling us, uh, give us a little review of FCS checkout this morning. He mentioned you had a little avionics transient, and I may have missed this if you mentioned it earlier. But uh, can you just give us a little update. Everything, the, the condition of all the systems that you need for reentry. Uh, yeah, it was a a, a little transient that we saw. We were doing, uh, of course, uh, secondary port. Uh, bypassing standard thing we do and what happened usually when we go through this and we get uh, the various ports bypassed we go through and recycle that by uh, cycling the FCS uh, switches or the control power to those when we cycled it the first time on uh, ATVC uh, one uh, the power didn't come back the first time we cycled it so uh, we cycled the FCS channel again and we recovered it you know, and we took a look at it. We didn't see any uh, shorts or any transient on the power. Uh, 
the, folk, the engineering folks said that they did see this one time, and I can't remember the flight because I was paying attention to the uh, flight loop when they were talking on the OPO, but they have seen this uh, at one flight prior. But the thing is, you know, we, we have four FCS channels. Even if we had that problem uh, with that single uh, ATVC channel one, uh, we still have three others, so we'll be able to do the um, main engine repositioning for uh, that Mach 8 that we do to make sure we have a good clearance for the drag chutes and then be able to do uh, post landing, uh, uh, putting repositioning the main engines to uh, rain drain. So we're uh, no problems right now. Thanks. And the last question from here, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's no that was fine. Uh, the, the last question from here, uh, you know, today the theme seems to be talking about Discovery's legacy and all that, and everybody else in the world has been asked that question, so I'm going to ask you. Uh, you're the guy that launches it and lands it. Uh, what are your thoughts about Discovery bringing her down for the last time? Thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the standard answer uh, that all my buddies have been saying. Uh, you know, we know that all this, this uh, hoopla and historical milestones are going on, but our focus right now is to make sure we have a, a clean vehicle and we, and we uh, get the crew safely to the, the ground tomorrow. And then once we get them out of the vehicle, we'll probably uh, sit back maybe at some establishment and talk about uh, the legacy and uh, um, how wonderful uh, this uh, machine has uh, been over the last uh, 39 missions. Okay, I think that's it from the Kennedy Space Center. Let's go to the phone lines. We have Robert Perlman. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectBase.com. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, Rob. Great. Um, you know, you just mentioned uh, saving the reflection for after uh, wheel stop, and um, and the crew earlier today said that while it's bittersweet, that the landing should be a moment of celebration as well. Uh, I wondered if there were any plans within Mission Control for any type of uh, of celebration of the landing after wheel stop. You know, cigars being handed out or a cake or anything like that. <laughs> I think all I have planned is a standard uh, handshake. And uh, we know we still have, even though uh, Discovery's ending its, uh, its trip, uh, we still have uh, two other missions that we have to focus on. So uh, maybe it'll all hit us uh, then a year here when we're complete with all that. But tomorrow it's just going to be the standard thanks to all the folks that have supported this flight. And then uh, we'll get ready for the next one here in about six weeks or so. Okay. I think that's it from Robert. Uh, James Dean? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tony. Recognizing that the conditions certainly could change quite a bit um, in the next day, could, I would just wonder if you could describe uh, in a little more detail what you're forecasting right now and, you know, things hold up, you know, how they look right now, just in terms of, you know, the general picture for winds and uh, clouds and yeah. just kind of the, the scene that, that you hope to see there. Okay, I can uh, give you the forecast that the uh, weather guys gave me this morning. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, scattered at 3,000, and the scattered decks, uh, we're looking at two to three ace coverage. So uh, uh, that uh, alleviates our concerns if that'll turn into broken. We got scattered at 20,000 feet, good visibility. And right now the winds are 120 at 15, peaking to 21, which gives us uh, a crosswind about peak of 12. and. Uh, uh, head and tail, uh, 12 peak, and uh, or I'm sorry, 12 peak, 17. With the uh, current head and tail winds right now, uh, 1.5 is the only uh, available runway per the rules. But we'll continue to evaluate 3.3, and if for some, if it has good uh, touchdown conditions and such, uh, and we need to go there, we'll uh, talk about that. Uh, one of the good things I uh, talked about, I think Mark asked that uh, earlier, that uh, you know we kind of like uh, looking at what our forecasts are and what the actual conditions are, and today. Uh, pretty much lined up with uh, what the uh, uh, weather folks were uh, forecasting. So that gives us pretty good confidence that the models that they're looking at are going to uh, continue to track with uh, what they're predicting tomorrow. But, you know, again, it's, it's Florida, and uh, we'll, when we come in tomorrow for our shift at 3.30, we'll see what we have, and we'll work it accordingly. So, so um, I, I didn't immediately catch all those wind wind uh, numbers there. Is that is that kind of the, the thing to watch? Is that the concern? Uh, no, right now the winds are uh, well below uh, uh, flight rules. Okay. Um, we have someone flying uh, weather recon tomorrow? Uh, yes. C.J. Sturko is uh, the pilot out at KSC. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go to Andy Cox with the Weather Channel. All right, thanks. Uh, you can guess my questions about the weather. Um, so a couple quick things. Um, you know, as you said, Florida weather can change at the drop of a hat. 
Um, do you have the, the general times or at least the number of opportunities that will be available on Thursday? Uh, yes. Uh, Thursday, uh, basically, what we'll be looking at is uh, all the three Kona sites, KSC, uh, Edwards, and Northrop, and we'll uh, look at uh, what the forecasts are for there. Again, like I said, if KSC, does, it all depends on, you know, if KSC doesn't look good the first couple opportunities, of course, they're, they're first in line, then it's uh, Northrop and Edwards are mixed in there. But, you know, our, our number one goal is go to KSC. Uh, just because they have all the uh, support there and of course the families are going to be there too but uh if it doesn't meet our weather criteria and uh and it's just unsafe thing to do then we'll go down the line and we'll talk about if we wave off tomorrow if we want to bring northrop up if edwards is looking good for all the opportunities that might be the only uh, site that we bring up okay and I, and I should be asking you the questions about weather <laughs> now you guys, you guys have a pretty good crew down there, so yeah, we um, sure do. Also, you'd mentioned that uh, 15, really 15 is going to be the only one available for tomorrow. Um, what are the other general criteria that you guys use to select whether to go into 15 or 33, especially on the weather side? Uh, you know, it's uh, it all depends on what the uh, the low level winds are um, as the crew's going around the hack and what kind of. Uh, uh, performance the uh, orbiter itself has uh, if it's you know low energy high energy uh, you know when we when we, we get the uh, SVA pilots to fly a couple dives and we ask them about what the you know what kind of turbulence it is uh, what they think the best end of the runway is and uh, the crews take uh, their advice on which direction to go and when things are pretty even you know we uh, we pick with the best uh, what the STA folks recommend but you know, like in this case right now uh, what we're predicting the uh, one, three three is no go due to just the uh, forecast winds. But like I said, we'll go through and run all the the uh, predictions and such. And if it if we have good touchdown predictions and and we ask the STA if it's a if it would be a good runway to go to, we could also include that as part of our uh, toolbox uh, and possibly use that end if required. Okay, thanks. Okay, I think that's it on the phone lines. Anything back here in Houston at all? Okay, we'll wrap up today's briefing. Tony and his team will be on console. Uh, for Discovery's entry at 3.30 a.m. Central Time, a nice leisurely uh, extra 30 minutes for us. But uh, we'll take a look at exactly what the weather's doing in the morning. And, of course, we'll have all the latest information on NASA TV during our commentary. And you can also follow along at nasa.gov. We're going to send it back to Mission Control now for more continuing coverage of Discovery's final flight.